Greetings, fellow Trekkies! I am Lieutenant Commander Adam, and welcome back to our Star Trek Starships Explained series. We spent much of last year looking at Starfleet's impressive Armada of Federation-designed starships, but now it's time to beam elsewhere in the galaxy and look at some alien species starship designs and how they fit into our beloved Star Trek universe. But where shall we begin on this intrepid venture across the vastness of space? Surely there's a more condensed way to say that. Well, may I suggest a vessel to which I had the same reaction on my first encounter with it, as reportedly the TMP staff had when they first read about the V'ger entity. Look out, Flying Turd. That's right, we are learning today about the Galar-class warship. This cruiser was a primary ship used by the Cardassians during their engagements in the 24th century. And yes, I'm aware that there's a very obvious joke that everybody makes when it comes to the Cardassians. I'm not going to make it in this video, so if that's what you're waiting for, just make like Q and vanish. Everybody else, stick around and take a closer look at this ship that had a heavy presence in both the Dominion War and Deep Space Nine in general, including, of course, the behind-the-scenes story and its origins in depth. Stick with me. We're going to Warp Nine. As always, please do let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, because if you're talking about Star Trek, we want to hear about it! We'd also like your suggestions for ships we could talk about next. Myself, Captain Jack, Commander Dom, and Starfleet's other most underrated Lieutenant Commander, the inimitable Mr. Turner, are hard at work on brand new ideas for the next ships we can bring to your screens. Okay, engage! Introduced sometime in the late 24th century, the Galar-class cruiser was commonly referred to as the warship of the Cardassian military, not to be confused with the Obsidian Order. On occasion, Starfleet would refer to this class of ship as a destroyer, however that was almost exclusively during the Dominion War. The Galar-class's overall appearance was somewhat shaped like the Egyptian Ankh symbol. Think along the lines of a half-moon structure atop the primary hull. And interestingly, the symbol of the Cardassian Union was this same similar Ankish shape, which was probably why the Galar was designed like this. A literal symbol of the Cardassian government in the form of a ship. The whole type of the Galar class was so well designed, in the Cardassian's opinion, that the main component was used in the design of the Keldon class counterpart. These Keldon ships utilized Galar class space frames with additional structures on the rear and main body. Coming in at 371.88 meters long, the Galar class typically carried a crew of between 3 and 600 personnel. Tactical system-wise, the Galar class sported numerous phaser arrays, and while an impressive armament, the ship still was considered slightly inferior to the likes of the Federation Galaxy class. Which, yes, I know, is a weird comparison to make, sort of like saying that a Reliant Robin has better handling than an Aston Martin Valkyrie because it has one fewer wheel to turn. However, both their defense systems of shields and hull strength combined with their weapons made them very effective against Miranda-class starships and Klingon birds of prey. And I'm talking about the Galar again there, not the Reliant Robin. I know, it's an amazing car, but it would look silly in a space battle and you know it. At one point in time, it seemed the Cardassians might have experimented with either photon or plasma-based torpedoes. In the Star Trek Next Generation episode of Ensign Row, two Type III Galar-class warships fired a weapon that resembled something along the lines of a photon or plasma torpedo, but there was never any description of this weapon given. It has also never been seen since. Therefore, we theorize that this was likely experimental, or for these ships alone, and not every Galar class carries the same type of weapon seen here. Overall, Cardassian technology was still somewhat behind that of the Federation. A prime example of this is in the year 2367. Galar class warships, and presumably other ships in the fleet, lack the ability to read Federation starship transponder codes. The Federation did possess this technology, and thankfully for them, the Cardassians were granted this ability by Captain Jean-Luc Picard, due to a crisis at the time with the Nebula-class USS Phoenix. 
In terms of interior layouts, the Galo class featured your typical Cardassian approach. The captain's chair, or rather the gull's chair, was in a raised position so that the commanding officer could oversee everyone underneath them. It's unclear when the Galar class was officially commissioned and brought into service by the Cardassian military. We know that they were in operation by 2367, of course. However, the Federation Cardassian War, otherwise known as the Cardassian Border Conflict, took place between 2347 and 2366. It's likely that the Galar class was somewhat active towards the end of this conflict at the very least, but we don't know that for certain. A Gala class starship engaged the Galaxy-class USS Enterprise-D, under the command of Captain Picard, of course, in 2367 during the aforementioned situation on the Cardassian border involving the Phoenix. Captain Ben Maxwell had gone rogue, because of course he had, and was attacking Cardassian outposts and starships, presumably to give himself a jolly. The commander of the Gala class, Gull Masset, informs Picard that his species have been attacked by a Federation ship, and it's at this point that Picard makes clear how much more powerful the Enterprise D is compared to the Gala class. Furious, find out what is behind this. Give me one hour. The alternative is for us to continue firing at one another. And in such a contest, you would be at a disadvantage. It's unclear if Golmaset sent Gala class warships to intercept the Phoenix, as they were made light work of by the Federation starship. We certainly hope not. Given that Masset reported that the warship had a crew complement of 600, though, it's safe to assume that it probably was a Galar class ship that was destroyed by the Rogue Nebula class. Eventually, this situation was diffused, with Captain Maxwell standing down and being confined to quarters aboard the Enterprise. How nice of them not to throw him in the brig! Maxwell believed that the Cardassians were secretly rearming and preparing for another conflict, which, to be fair, they always were. While this could not be proved at the time, Jean-Luc Picard did leave Golmaset with a warning, he's always watching. Which honestly sounds a bit creepy now. Moving on. Take this message to your leaders, Golmaset. We'll be watching. In 2368, the USS Enterprise-D had another run-in with multiple Gala-class warships. This was all part of a covert alliance that Vice Admiral Kennelly entered with the Cardassians to eliminate a Bajoran terrorist cell. Ultimately, it ended up that the Cardassians had been manipulating the Admiral, and Picard was able to lure out the Cardassians and the conspiracy was exposed. Way! Jean-Luc later speculated that the Admiral himself would probably be court-martialed for his illegal actions, and we can only imagine what kind of harsh punishment the Federation Council and Starfleet would levy upon him. I hope they didn't confine him to quarters. I mean, that's like having a jail on a starship. The Gala class warship would make a few other appearances in the lead-up to 2369. Gala class cruisers were hovering around the area after the Cardassians retreated from Bajor, and when the Federation took command of the former Cardassian space station Terok Nor, now renamed Deep Space Nine. Following the Enterprise D delivering the new station commander Benjamin Sisko to the area and then departing, a Gala class warship under the command of Gull Dukat entered the system. Dukat's Gala class remained near Deep Space Nine, telling the new commander of DS9 that he would offer help if needed, but instead would investigate the Bajoran wormhole, which would be discovered soon after. With the outbreak of the Dominion War, the Cardassians allied themselves with the Dominion. That was a clever idea, wasn't it? And as such, the Gala class warship became their main starship used in both their fleets and engagements throughout the war. While not being as technologically advanced compared to Federation Galaxy class ships or even the Dominion Zone ships, the Gala class still put up a good deal of engagements with other vessels. Notably, if it was very effective against lighter Federation ships such as the Miranda class. As the war began to fail for the Dominion and Cardassian side, the Cardassians switched sides and fought back against the Dominion forces of the Vorta, Changelings, Jem'Hadar, and Breen. Dozens of Gala class warships suddenly joined the Federation fleet in attacking the other Dominion ships. As such, the Federation and Allied ships were able to break the Dominion's lines and continue onwards to Cardassia Prime. After the Dominion War met its end, with Cardassia Prime in rubble and billions of Cardassians dead, what became of the Galar class is unknown. 
Whether the Cardassian Union would be disarmed or not allowed to have warships is unknown, as the only Cardassian vessels seen in use after the Dominion War are Hideki-class ships, and by 2380 the Union would have an upgraded version of these much smaller, multi-purpose vessels. Given the heavy presence of the Cardassians in Deep Space Nine, it's no wonder that the Gallo class became such a recognizable ship in the Star Trek universe. But how did it come to be designed in the first place? Well, we've already touched on the fact that it was first introduced in The Next Generation, while making its debut appearance in The Wounded. But it was first actually identified by name in the episode Ensign Row. With the very silly looking introduction of the Cardassians in TNG, a new starship was needed to match their appearance. And of course, this task fell to senior illustrator Rick Sternbach. To design what would become the iconic Galar class, Sternbach produced a series of rough sketches. Eventually, producers would select one of those sketches and Sternbach would move to create it into a more detailed drawing. Usually, this would then be approved. However, the Galar class was different. Sternbach has previously revealed that the design went through a major revolution. Originally, it was very bland and somewhat pedestrian. Upon comparing the original design to the Enterprise D, the producers told Sternbach to give them something weird. Sternbach went back to the drawing board and ended up making a mental connection between the Cardassians and the Egyptian pharaohs. This is how the Galar class ended up looking like the Ankh symbol. Ultimately, the class is a departure from the usual Starship style we see in Star Trek on a general basis. Model makers Ed Majorecki and Tom Hudson would go on to create the studio model of the Galar class at their model shop. This was called science fiction and model making. The pair were left with just three weeks to build the model for the production team. The Galar class was one of the most complex model constructions the team had ever worked on and the basic frame of the class was made from aluminium and featured complex lighting circuits that lit the impulse engines, windows, and the navigational deflector. The final model was 37 inches long, and according to both Myrecki and Hudson, it featured their initials in the detailing. This model would appear in seven episodes of The Next Generation, two episodes of Voyager, and multiple episodes of Deep Space Nine. Now, for the last two seasons of DS9, the Galar class was a CG model instead. The physical model was sent to Foundation Imaging and used as a reference by Brandon McDougall, who built the CG model from the ground up. The real model of the Galar class was sold at the 40 years of Star Trek The Collection auction for $24,000 in 2006, which in my opinion is a very nice way to end its journey, at least for now. And with that, we round up the history of the Galar class in Star Trek. What shall we cover next? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you want to keep up to date with all the latest Star Trek news, lore, and more, then make sure you hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. But for now, I've been Lieutenant Commander Adam. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time, my friends. Look out, Flying Turd.